In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning to everyone joining us at home for Mass as well. Hoping you're all well. I'm offering this Mass for PJ Carroll. PJ is um, much missed and much loved, uh, not least by me, a friend of mine who lived in Ireland, and today is his anniversary. So we pray for the repose of his soul and for all those mourning him. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the venerable exercises of holy devotion shape the hearts of your faithful, O Lord, to welcome worthily the paschal mystery and proclaim the praises of your salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading this morning, we're back to the prophet Ezekiel. Ezekiel is a book of visions, and it's one of these that we hear this morning. The reading speaks of the lavish nature of God with the water that flows from the temple. Read in conjunction with today's gospel, it points to the healing nature of the waters that flow from Christ's side on the cross. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me to the entrance of the temple where a stream came out from under the temple threshold and flowed eastwards, since the temple faced east. The water flowed from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He took me out by the north gate and led me right round the outside as far as the outer east gate where the water flowed out on the right hand side. The man went to the east holding his measuring line and measured of a thousand cubits. He then made me wade across the stream. The water reached my ankles. He measured off another thousand and made me wade across the stream again the water reached my knees. He measured of another thousand and made me wade across again. The water reached my waist. He measured of another thousand. It was now a river which I could not cross. The stream had swollen and was now deep water, a river impossible to cross. He then said, do you see, son of man? He took me further then brought me back to the bank of the river. When I got back, there were many trees on each bank of the river. He said, this water flows east down to the Arabah and to the sea, and flowing into the sea, it makes its waters wholesome. Wherever the river flows, all living creatures teeming in, it will live. Fish will be very plentiful, for wherever the water goes, it brings health, and life teams wherever the river flows. Along the river on either bank will grow every kind of fruit tree with leaves that never wither and fruit that never fails. They will bear new fruit every month because this water comes from the sanctuary and their fruit will be good to eat 
and the leaves medicinal. The word of the Lord. Now let us say the Psalms together. God is for us a refuge and strength, a help across at hand in times of distress. So we shall not fear, though the earth should rock, though the mountains fall into the depths of the sea. The waters of the river give joy to God's city, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within, it cannot be shaken. God will help it at the dawning of the day. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come, consider the works of the Lord, the redoubtable deeds he has done on the earth. Please stand to welcome the gospel. Praise, Praise the Lord and honor Lord to you, Lord Jesus. A pure heart create for me, O God, and give me again the joy of your help. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus. The Lord be with you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a Jewish festival and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now at the sheep pool in Jerusalem, there is a building called Bethsatha in Hebrew, consisting of five porticos. And under these were crowds of sick people, blind, lame, paralysed. One man there had had an illness which had lasted 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there and knew he had been in this condition for a long time, he said, do you want to be well again? Sir, replied the sick man, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is disturbed, and while I am still on the way, someone else gets there before me. Jesus said, Get up, pick up your sleeping mat and walk. The man was cured at once, and he picked up his mat and walked away. Now that day happened to be the Sabbath, so the Jews said to the man who had been cured, It is the Sabbath, you are not allowed to carry your sleeping mat. He replied, but the man who cured me told me, pick up your mat and walk. They asked, who is the man who said to you, pick up your mat and walk? The man had no idea who it was since Jesus had disappeared into the crowd that filled the place. After a while, Jesus met him in the temple and said, now you are well again, be sure not to sin any more, or something worse may happen to you. The man went back and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had cured him. It was because he did things like this on the Sabbath that the Jews began to persecute Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The baptism ceremony is one which is very rich in symbols. Water is an essential part of life, so clearly expresses what's taking place in the sacrament. The pouring of the water symbolises the cleansing that's an essential part of baptism. The fact that we can't survive without water emphasises the life-giving nature of the sacrament. In today's Gospel, we hear how the man wanted to be placed into the water so he could be healed. Like in baptism, the water is a symbol of cleansing a new life, that will free the man from his disease. In response to the man's desire to be well, Jesus heals his infirmity. But St. John, in his account, is more concerned with the, other man, with the man's other infirmity, that caused by his sin. Jesus requires the man to give this up so he can leave all his infirmity behind. The same requirement also applies to us. We must leave our old ways behind to enjoy the closeness to the Lord a life without sin brings. Like the man in the Gospel, we must admit our infirmity, change our habits of sin, and surrender ourselves to the Lord who cleanses us. Today's Gospel shifts our focus away from physical healing to spiritual cleansing, which runs far deeper we're able to share in Christ's healing power. But like the man in the Gospel, 
To be cleansed means we must change our ways and let that cleansing take hold. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer to you, O Lord, these gifts which you yourself have bestowed. May they attest to your care as Creator, for this our mortal life, and effect in us the healing that brings us immortality. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heights. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Malcolm our Bishop, his assistant bishops and all the clergy. Remember your servant PJ, whom you have called from this world to yourself, 
Grant that he who was united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our saviour jesus christ Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Purify our minds, O Lord, we pray, and renew them with this heavenly sacrament, that we may find help for our bodies now and likewise in times to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today is the service of thanksgiving for the life of, a life of the Duke of Edinburgh. Let's say the eternal rest for him now and also for PJ, for whom I'm offering this Mass. Eternal rest, grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. Grant, O merciful God, that your people may remain always devoted to you and may constantly receive from your kindness whatever is for their good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for Mass this morning, those of you here in church and those of you at home. Bye, God bless.